murmurings of an Anglo rebellion. Reclaiming the birthright of our nation has been no simple task, but the great expanse of Alta California, Taos, and the surrounding territories have been reclaimed from the vile Americans, avenging the Spanish American War of 1848 after nearly a century. However, taking such a vast amount of gringo dominated land has been no easy task. The majority of the population are new northern states or English speaking Anglos who have begun to res actively resist the rule. These Yaquis are well armed, well motivated, and well supplied by northern contexts, and as such, many of the regime fear that these former Americans will try to rebel against us, given the chance. Let's keep an eye out on these scoundrels and stop out any resistance before, we grow, before it grows out of hand. The Gingos will learn to accept their rule. Oh boy. Allowing resistance to get over 6% of any occupied territories will lead to rebellion. Oh crap. Also, I did take over the WCC because without us, they would have all died. Like, in all honesty, like, we are the reason why they, these guys survived and did so well, so I don't feel bad using COD's commands for that, but swooping eagles. Many are ad adversaries, most notably counter-revolutionary Central American countries like an Air Force, so we should focus on supporting our army from the air. We'll not be able to challenge the Air Force of the Entente, so we should focus on exploiting the weakness of our smaller rivals, deconstruct all French bombers. Using small aircraft armed with nothing more than machine guns to destroy some enemy infrastructure and industry will be almost impossible. We need large aircraft with multiple engines to deliver a large pa bomb payload to the enemy. Uh, desert Acclimated Radar. <clears throat> radar, which stands for Radio Detection and Ranging. It has a new method of detection which will be quite useful for the Air Force. With radar installations built to withstand the whipping, debris-filled winds of our northern expanse, we'll be able to detect incoming aircraft outside of the viewing distance so that we can alarm our Air Force quickly enough. Sonoran Aerodomes. Our Air Force is constantly expanding, but our airfields can't keep up. The capacity limits will soon be exceeding. And we found out that you can't take off an aircraft from the jungle. We'll need to expand airfields quickly. Sterilize the skies. We're not the only ones who built up an Air Force, far from it actually. Our Air Force will most likely be on the defensive if we have to face major uh, counter-revolutionary Imperialist Air Forces. So we should aid them from the ground. And the crested Caracas Domain. The Mexican Air Force shall rule the skies, well, the skies of Central America at least. It'll stay, it'll take a while, quite a while until we can compete with the Air Forces of the Entente. And reorganize the North. Much has changed, of course, as I read earlier. Um, oh, what is this one? If you go into this again, please go ahead. Bohemia Problema. The Bohemia Problema is a society group dedicated to promoting and disseminating culture throughout Mexico. He, the pro group organized, among other activities, poetic uh, recitals, exhibitions, conferences, promotion, and sponsorship of ma magazines, the publication of its diffusion organ, the magazine. The group has become famous for its monthly meal sessions in the city of Puebla. These sessions tend to invite famous guests of honor from the artistic and cultural world, from poets to authors to musicians and more. Interesting. <clears throat> our policy in the Yaqui women. The law of, on women differ between our nation and the former United States, differences that will have to be rectified in this new status quo we find ourselves in. Whether it be on the right to own property, the right to vote, or whatever else, the rights and laws of the Northern women will have to be hashed out and legislated uh, to, or de-legislated to fit the needs and expectations of the new nation, our Mexico. So we'll see what happens with that. Also, so resistance is probably going up. Uh, actually, no, not too bad. Uh, it's still going up and around uh, that part of the Midwest up there near Michigan, whatnot, but whatever. Uh, so you're ahead of time, but I don't really care at this point. Um, military police? Why not? Ease of conscription? Probably not, as we are just fine to go to war with these guys, too. Um, some amount of manpower. It shouldn't take too long to go to war with them. Just another 100 days, you know, roughly 100 days, that's all. Uh, let's see, let's see. Get some radar up there. Get an airbase over here in Indiana. What do we have over here? Oh. We have a lot of army XP, though. And then we'll do a policy on them, the status of Anglo religions. As with so many of our other northern cultural elements that have come into question, following the Reconquista, the largely Protestant religions of the north have now come to the forefront of the debate. One wrong decision to misstep, then we might have given the gringos another reason to take up arms against us, so we must delicately approach the situation lest these heretical yaquis get uppity. <coughs> well, see, hope you enjoyed the time lapse from earlier. We almost get 1.76 political power every single day, which is pretty darn decent. You know. Overall, it's not bad. Um, reverse engineer the Anahuac. Invite foreign naval, naval engineers. Commission Castillo Breton. Well, we already went with a lot of battleships. We don't need this one. Please go ahead, as well as invite foreign naval engineers. It'd probably be better to do this one. Gringo riots. The Anglo population in our occupied territories has staged a number of protests against the rule recently, adding further, further fanning the flames of discontent and chaos in the north. Ranging from peaceful gatherings and illegal parades to major protests and acts of vandalism and mob violence. These expressions of the people's will have not gone unnoticed. With the loyal police forces and military doing their best to keep these scenes contained from spiraling out of hand, but many have still escalated despite our best efforts, obviously. It took a sub substantial amount of time until these gringos accept our rightful rule over Teos, Nuevo, Mexico, and Alta California until then. We must crack down on these riots and fast forward. Every protest and riot, their power only grows. Uh, Flora Silvestre is released. The movie, Wild Flowers, released today with glowing reviews. The movie is a drama about the son of a rich landowner who becomes a revolutionary in the Mexican Revolution. And who marries a peasant girl. It stars uh, Dolores del Rio, Pedro Almendares, and Miguel Angel Perez, and is directed by Emilio Fernandez. 
The movie was made as a collaboration between director Emilio Fernandez, often referred to as El Indio, and Augustine J. Fink, the president of the film's Mundiales. Uh, as well, Flower was not only critically acclaimed throughout Mexico, but it made a lot of money for them. It looks like this collaboration will be continued for the future. What shall they do next? That's a good question. Oh, I have no idea. Uh, let's go over here. Policy in the women. Women policy. Language question. Mexico may have a multicultural, multicultural, multilingual past, but the fact remains the new northerners speak in a tongue that is formed from our own. As such, most are free to conspire against us. Some hardliners claim we should introduce harsh sanctions on the English language, while the critics claim it will turn the Yankees further against us. We need to solve this debate and pass to set us on the course of integration. What to do with Tinseltown? The heart of the American film industry, the decadent and infamous Hollywood, has now come under our control. An economic paradise and cultural beacon as well as Dana de Dematrian Sin, Hollywood's one of the most division the most division acquisitions in the Reconquista, with just as many calling for it to be burned to the grounds there are people calling for it to purpose it for our own uses. As part of a larger reorganization for the Northern Territories, we'll have to decide what to do with it. A reorganization of the territories, national election, or relation over the La Reconquista continues in full swing, unfortunately. Overwhelming euphoria is now without its overzealous drawbacks. Recently, certain national activists, civil administrators, and other generally traditionalist voices have advocated that since the old Northern Territories have returned to us, we should likewise return the nature of their civil administration along with their, along revanchist lines. Um, <clears throat> that is, the former U.S. state should be redrawn and matched the pre-1848 borders of Alta California, Nuevo Mexico, Teos, and even the Oregon and Territory of New Gaines allow it. These conservatives argue that such a reorganization would centralize administration of the old U.S. states and streamline governance of the North while exalting Mexican pride and addressing the Estudio Unis colonialism over Mexico's ancestral lands. The progressive faction, meanwhile, dismissed those borders as vague even for the time and further denounced the scheme as archaic and practical and bound to outrage angles even more than ever. Instead, the progressives argued that established for, U, former U.S. administrations are already functional, well organized, and stable, and therefore should be adapted in full and merely expanded upon. Today, the Comité de Occupación del Norte is scheduled to hold a meeting and to adjourn with a decision on the matter. Expand on existing state apparatus? Where? Well, actually, I don't know why I went with the conservative one. I probably should have went with the progressive one. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. In the end, don't really matter. Alamo question. Was Dios now in possession of his rightful owner, the old Mission Santiago, San Antonio de Valero, or Mission de Alamo, as it turned to our hands? And for us, Alamo is a symbol of perverted holy ground, national humiliation, and wretched treason. However, for the Anglo Texans, it persists as an enduring symbol of freedom. The question now stands do we leave it be or do we tear it down? Gringo riots. Send more police? Yeah. Our sense of the northern natives. Uh, the retaken territories of the north contain a lot of Native Americans from the Navajo and Pueblo to the Comanche and Mojave, who have now all come under our control, however. Some of these uh, Amera Indians are resentful of being yet another foreign country, while others are instead thankful to be liberated from Yaqui uh, oppression. We have our star and shot to properly deal with them, a debate must, we must not work out. So, right now, overall, resistance seems to be dropping, which is nice. Central America is pretty small. Attacked by Anglo guerrillas. The Anglo insurrectionists in the north have launched a full scale uh, assault against their occupation territories, their forces. Our garrisons and fortifications across the northern territories have been raised to high alert, with many already facing the Anglo guerrillas in battle. It seems like yet another battle over the flashpoint has sparked to life, spilling the blood of both Mexicans and Anglos alike as our forces are once more lock, lock antlers and fight to the death. We must push them back. A bona fide discovery. While well, in a paleontological dig in the northern Arizona with that spirit no expense, paleontologist Charles L. Camp, along with the Navajo naturalist Jesse Williams, made an exciting new discovery. Digging at the Cayenta Formation, just 20 miles north of Tuba City on the Navajo Reservation, the group dug up three different sets of fossilized remains of a new carnivorous dinosaur. One skeleton was large and complete and intact, fossilized skeleton with only the front of the skull, parts of the pelvis, and some vertebrae missing, while the other two were far more eroded and fragmentary. Digging the University of California Museum of Paleontology for study, the specimen had been tentatively named Dilophosaurus. Dilof Dilophosaurus weatherly, and describes a medium sized predatory theropod hailing from the early Jurassic period with an estimated size around 23 feet long and adorned with a distinct two point crest upon its head. Some even speculated it may have had a large frill and it was even venomous, but these are dead as large have been decried. The discovery has been hailed as a miracle of science after the recent chaos in America for such an atmosphere has made science hard to pursue. May this be a sign of better things to come. What an odd specimen, it'll surely deepen our knowledge some over time, perhaps even entertain the masses. But we gotta talk about the status of women in the territories. <clears throat> Should be coming up soon, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Crest Caracas. Or Caracara. Well, maybe eventually, maybe not. We can still demobilize if we really want to. Which we might. We need the political power. 
Okay, so Anglo women have taken to the streets and planned demonstrations, not against Mexican occupation, but for women's rights. While well, generally critical of Mexico's actions, suffragists have decided to make the best of a progressive government and thus petition Mexico City to succeed where Washington failed by officially extending Mexico's constitutional rights of women to the northern territories. Now is not the best time? Grant universal rights for all women. Uh, El Santo enters the ring. Today, the masked wrestler El Santo has entered the ring for the first time, winning a royal bout against eight different other wrestlers using acrobatic kicks and throws that would become his trademark style. It's quickly become famous for refusing to remove the silver mask that has become his persona. The silver Status stand. of language in the territories. Uh, the majority of both the Mexican and Anglo populations do not speak each other's language, which is already sparking incidents of civil unrest in the northern territories and our border states like Baja and Sonora. Well, for the entire Anglo population to learn to speak Spanish would be impractical to say the least. Perhaps some basic programs could at least assist our troops and settlers in the north. The principal subject of the session of the Comité is simple. From schools and government operations to restaurants and street signs, what will be the official language that is used for everything within the Northern Territories? English? Mesopism? Bilingual? Espanol, that's right. Yeah, absolutely, even though the death of El Jefe. After a decade of heartbreak over the loss of his beloved Natalia and after the rigors of statecraft ground down in his health and will, the beloved put the Putarco Callas, or El Jefe Maximo, has finally given up the ghost. In the wake of his passing, eventually, a power vacuum has been cut open within the Maximato and the PNR with Lazaro Cardenas, Emilio Portas, Gil, and Emmanuel Perez Trevino, all jockeying for power and control over the part in the state. Only one can rise to take the place of El Jefe, and now all of Mexico waits for the day for the new strongman will rise above the others to lead our nation into its new destiny. Huh. Resident Gil, huh? Trevino. Our martyr. Supreme Caldillo. It's not bad. Resolve Kaya's corrupt Congress. Expand the Senate's power. An ideal, idealized Kaya's. All under the party. Yeah, we'll see. We will see. We're going to need way more rubber, though. But we're working on it already, so. Not super concerned about that. I'm um, almost done with that stuff too, and then we'll have to do with Tinsel Town and the fate of Hollywood, of course. There's a lot of different options we have here. Garza. First fair and free elections. Diaz. Baragon. Rise of. Oh. Anahuac. Alright, and it's just up down here too. Recruit Vigilantes. Establish Garda Fronterizio. Secret police. I kind of prefer this one or recruit vigilantes. I kind of prefer this one though. Establish Guardia Fronterizio. Um, but we should have uh, Fate of Hollywood coming up very soon, hopefully. Maybe not. How much book part do we get? 1.85. That's actually not bad. In order to quell the Anglo Rebellion, the Intelligence Ministry has proposed the establishment of a new secret police. In order to shut up their activities and break up the separatist Anglo cells, such an agency would not only turn the tide against the rebellion, but also give any other internal subverters in the Yaqui or Yankee uh, terrorist pause the next time they think about raiding their settlements. There on the surface, they shall have done the mask of Guardia Fronterizio de la Reconquista Mexicana, or Border Guard of the Mexican Reconquest, a normal government agency dedicated to the border safety. However, under the surface, they shall operate above the laws of state's own secret police who will wage an underground war against Anglo rebels in the service of the nation. Fate of Hollywood. Well, all to California finally ours again. Our regime needs to decide what to do with the famous film industry once a pillar of U.S. capitalist propaganda. However, the committee is divided between multiple different positions or possibilities as to what we could do with this in Tinseltown. Simply that we should leave the studios relatively alone, barring a new film censorship and approval board that must surely put in place to watch dog this den of excess and hedonism. Setting these sins in Hollywood's history of craft and expropriation, some hardliners have suggested and said that the area be purged and raised to the ground so that we may build something far more useful for El Pueblo in its place. While industrializing the studios would boost California's recovery, the studios make a lot of taxable money and their new citizens not... Nortenos will be upset, which has pushed some others to instead advocate for either complete nationalization of the studios or instead transfer the state to public ownership or the proletariat. With the groups only agreeing so far that a watchdog must be put in place like this discussed, as anyone's guess will come on top. Remember, they help finance Los Viastas under the government control. Belongs to the workers. And build heavy industry. I like that one a lot, but maybe we'll go with this one. Because uh, we could use that for propaganda purposes, which would be perfect for total yeah, some religion in the territories. Well, Mexico has historically been a Catholic country. The Anglo stick on the religious heritage of England, Protestantism. The people in the Northern Territories, Teos in particular, are deeply religious, so the committee must tread carefully as it, seek, to seeks, 
as it seeks to tinker with religious policy. It'd be foolish ever to ignore intelligence reports over a spy service which emphasize how the local churches are condoning, aiding, and abetting the insurrectionists, many of whom are zealous Protestants themselves. Freely go about their business, enforce anti clerical laws? Uh, wow, that's a lot of stability lost, or at least political power, but oh well. It was inevitable that the question to King, symbol known as the Alamo, would arise. As it stands, the Alamo is the rallying point for insurrectionists and a shrine for the old Anglo regime, practically standing as the mecca of the Anglo resistance. Therefore, resolutions would call it to eliminate the building and thus repurpose its symbolic value, but again, this may only serve to incur the wrath of the gringos. As per the director of the Comité de Occupation del Norte, the Alamo will be preserved as a cultural heritage site, memorial dedicated to fallen soldiers, demolished with urban expansion built over for good measure. Absolutely. The status of American Indians. With the change of government, it's only natural that the ostracized groups will seek support from the new government in hopes of finally overturning their fortunes. In this case, it's America's first peoples, which with we share the lineage of Native American nativity and European colonialism. Deprived of the territory as well as their sovereignty, Indians now live like zoo animals in the reservations with poverty's rampant, and the proposed Indian Citizenship Act of 1936 does not go far enough in repairing centuries of subjugation. Therefore, we shall expand on the act as it is our moral imperative that we could grant assistance to the destitute American Indian and begin lifting them from the oppression of last. Stand alongside them? They have no place in our Mexico. The end of the Yankee or Yankee Rebellion, or Yankee. We have taken the measures, necessary measures, and the tide of the rebellion has turned. It's time to end this uprising once and for all. The loss of 1845, 6, and 48 have all been avenged. Mexico is finally whole once more. With the new policies and ordinances, the gringo menace nothing but distant memory. After a final death blow has been dealt, Mexico will be truly safe and secure, restored to its former territorial glory. Peace has nearly been brought to the expansive and wild north, and now the Mexican eagle soars from California to the Yucatan. Reborn like a phoenix from the ashes, is ready to face its new future head on. The reintegration of Mexican session. Now that one. Um, well, out looking outwards and onwards. With the land of the Reconquista restored both to our lands and hands into order, and with our internal troubles dealt with and our economy improving, it's finally time to properly take a look at Mexico's status on the world stage and for ways to improve our international position. Destiny is dying for people in our nation, and we're now prepared to grasp it, so let's take these new duty and strides with the blitz towards the new future. Integration or reintegration of the Mexican session. After many years of extensive resettlement and extensive propaganda and efforts, uh, and many cr numerous crushed uprisings, the organized rebellion against Mexican governance has largely subsided. While some resistance persists amongst old militia extremists, Anglos are large have gradually come to terms with the rule. And so there's a now significant minority in the northern territories. With Los ter ter Territorios Reconquistados firmly under our control, we've won unhindered access to its resources and industries in Mexican session, and the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo have been finally undone. A decade's old humiliation has finally been avenged. Wow, and that just shot up our strength like crazy. Holy crap. Look at that. 100%. 1.2 2 million. So now, all this is the Mexican session. Like, Texas is now cored. All of California's cord, which is huge. LA's cord. Uh, Nevada, Utah, New Mexico, Arizona, even this part of Oklahoma has been cored. Which is kind of nuts to think about, but whatever. 30 political power, not enough, but whatever. Uh, we'll come down here and grab this one. We'll grab you. Uh, but that's pretty much it. We have right, Mexico's rightful place in North America, and that's pretty much it for us. Because we have no other expansion focuses available. Because we can't unite the cosmic race, unfortunately. We can't push a border claims, which sucks, because we did get quite a bit more. Bring the Philippines back into the Hispanic world, and the Sunset Invasion would be nice, but we can't do that, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Next was Rifle Place in North America. For far too long, Mexico played the second fiddle to the other uh, powers of North America, but this legacy stops now. We shall rise and dominate the New Worlds, dethrone the crumbling Americans from their long-held positions as hegemons of the Americas. Now it's time for Mexico to take its rifle place and in the sun. And now we can see if we can go to war with the United States of America. Emergency reserves call it up. We'll see what happens. But at the same time, we can conquer Central America for Mexico, which we kind of already have. Claim the Caribbean, which we could do, but we only get claims. And then bring the Philippines back into the Hispanic world, which is kind of cool as well. So let's do that one first, I suppose. As long as these guys don't join uh, the Entente, we should be okay. They have up to 88 divisions, 20,000 losses, not bad. Um, our divisions are really, really freaking thick. They have a lot of manpower, though. Um, I did, this is the division we are using. They are 44 combat with, they have 20, almost 24 armor when they had good tanks. Well, I did make heavy flame tank companies, more attack, which is nice, Tw almost 24 more armor. Um, of a breakthrough, so overall, I decided, you know what, screw it, let's get a little crazy here at the end. And we should do alright, you know. Over 2.2 .2 political power every single day, I think that's pretty darn. Wow. They died. Holy crap. Holy shnikes. Of course, we, they do have an Air Force, though. I mean, they're not doing too badly. He's about promoted. Um, they can sort of pierce us. Sort of ish. Yeah. Okay. Maria Candelaria is released. Maria Candelaria was released today in cinemas to overwhelmingly 
well, glowing reviews. The review film is a drama about the indigenous people of Mexico. It was directed by Emilio Fernandez and the starring Dolores Del Rio and Pedro Armendariz. The movie was the first Mexican film to be screened internationally at the Cannes Film Festival, earning the Grand Prix, becoming the first film from Latin America to do so. A film that all should see. Bring back these guys into uh, Hispanic rule. Yeah, why not? Ooh, that's not good. Uh, where are ships? They still repairing. Hey, I go to this. Please go ahead. You only hope they recover. Crap. It's going to take forever to repair that stupid ship. Whatever. How many divisions? I got 51 divisions. 169,000 casualties, which is absolutely insane to think about. Yeah. And they're by themselves. They can't really do much against us, which is so nice. Um, I can't pierce them. Alright, those guys have stopped killing each other, huh? Oh, and a little bit of lag because they started piecing out or something. Which kind of sucks for us, but whatever. That's alright. Russian Republic. Oh, wow. Oh, this is looking disgusting. Jesus Christ, what the heck happened here? Oh, Vietnam is released. Huh. Wow. Well, anyways. Getting closer to the, to the uh, Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. And the mountains. They can't pierce us, though, which is super nice. They can't pierce us. They can't do jack squat against us. As we're building just a crap ton of roads up, so. More roads, please. Mexicans will be known in this timeline as those who are totalists and road builders. Oh, do we have this? Oh, I forgot about this. No, we didn't get it quite done yet. That's super close, though. Super close. Can they pierce us? Oh, yeah, they can. Oh, well. More tanks, shall we? Yes, we shall. Mm. Why not? There you go. There we go, nice. That's even better, too. Over a quarter million losses for them. Nice, nice. Mal Mal. Oh, we can pierce our two divisions. It does kind of suck, but whatever. Oh, Washington's a frontline city. Can we actually take it? Yeah, I probably can. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, this is extremely easy doing it like this. Washington is ours. Beautiful, my friend. Beautiful. Yeah, once you throw in those heavy flame tanks, oh good god, they can't do jack squat against us, can they? Over 300,000 losses, 40 divisions, just getting demolished. Philadelphia is going to be ours soon too. All, all of Delaware, all of Georgia, all of Florida. You know, then, my god, this was, this part was really easy to do. Um, uh, clean the Caribbean, sure, why not? And they all died. 400,000, almost 400,000 losses. Is it 400,000 now? Almost. Working on it. Cool. And now it's over 400,000. Yay! Fall Sydney. Looking pretty good so far, I'd say. Oh, yeah. Republic of South Africa. It's going to take a while to get these guys, too. That's alright. Clean up some of these pockets. That'll be good. Oh, hello. No one's down there, huh? My god, that takes so long to do. But we're looking pretty good as Estado Maximo de Mexico. Looking pretty darn decent, not gonna lie. Um, there you go, do Hungarians. I don't think we'll ever get there, and I think we're pretty much done after we take out the United States of America, but that's alright. Infantry and tank, get some Mountaineers, even though we're not even using Mountaineers, whatever. That'd be alright with us. Claim American Pacific Holdings? You betcha. Oh, go to war with Alaska. Wait, what? Why do we go to war with Alaska? That's me a republic. And there goes America. I think we've done pretty darn well for ourselves, not gonna lie. Fight the Philippines? Well, I guess if we really wanted to, we could. But we don't really have to, so... The fate of America? Divide America and give autonomy to the Black Belt. Oh, wait, why Black Belt? Oh, you released New England, New York City, New England, Hawaii, the PSA, er, the Enclave gets core in Maryland? Wait, what? Oh, that's really cool. Divide Black America without the Black Belt. Liberate Socialist America? 
I'll get fired all these guys, huh? Well, we could if we really wanted to, but I don't think we will in this campaign. I think I'm pretty much done here. I think we've done extraordinarily well, especially for being by ourselves. You know, we had not that much help. Maybe slight, some slight help from... Uh, I'll get this one too, but whatever. Pacto de Maxima Defensa. Um, with a little bit of help from the Union of Britain, because I guess the French didn't want to help us out. So, it is what it is. But hey, if you enjoyed this campaign, because I thoroughly did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great Mexican rest of your day.